Hello, it's Wednesday. It is Submarine Wednesday. So I want to welcome you all to Relaxing Painting with uh, Dyson Dungeons. And we are getting back to the vintage George Washington. It's one of our cats saying hello. Uh, George Washington Poseidon launching submarine. Um, I finished prepping and priming all the little bits that we did last week. Uh, there's there's a lot of parts here, and uh, they they came out okay. Some of these they were a little bit hard to prime because it was using a spray can, and these are real tiny. And the force of the spray just sent them flying all over the place. So I had to, you know, kind of uh, catch up with them. Um. So yeah, uh, we're starting to paint them. The uh, Let's just say that the painting instructions are a little bit less than totally helpful. You know, like green, the whole thing, green and red. And this is supposed to be white, the bed sheets, of course, right? And then there's tan and tan. And um, tan and green and... At uh, one point, I'm thinking, you know, when I was a kid using testers, uh, enamels, that was just about it. And so there was this tendency, of course, where it said, you know, painted green, that you would take something that was as intricate as this with torpedo doors and wires and fire extinguishers and dials and gauges and everything. And just it said green, right? So you paint the whole thing green. Well, I'm going to be doing my best here to try to bring out all the detail on this that's going to be quite a challenge especially all these little wires um i mean i can paint the dials and things i think i can handle that with the mag head magnifiers and the and the tiny brush um but i'm going to try i want to get these wires as much as i can and i think what i'm going to try to do is use a fine tipped pen and if it doesn't work i'll just paint over it again I guess um, so I was trying to get some guidance on this and I as I had promised I would I did not go out of my way to look up submarine interiors uh, no I didn't do that because it just would have been a huge amount of um, but I thought what I might use as a color guide is the box top okay so when it says green, it doesn't mean like emerald green. It's kind of a light green. So I've got two options for that. I don't want to start mixing paints. Um, but when they started saying tan, okay, you've got the tan that's on the floor here, which is kind of a oh, cork kind of color. But then this tan is darker. And then the hatch covers are yet a lighter color. Okay. Um... And then the torpedo racks are yet another color. So what is meant by tan is highly uh, any subjective. So what, what I did, and one of the reasons I started a little bit late today, is I was um, going through all the colors that I had that are tan. Um, as far as the green goes, I've got light green and sick green. And looking at the box, of light green, their, their green is even slightly yellower than light green, but I don't have anything like that. And like I said, I don't think I want to start mixing paints with this model. Um, I probably could spend some time... Oh hunting around for the right shade, but, um, I mean, who knows if that's the right shade, right? I mean, that's just the box top. So I'm probably going to, I'm going to go with the light green. There isn't that much of it. It only shows up in the torpedo room and in the sail and on some of the walls here in the control room. When you start looking at some of the other rooms, like the dining room, 
and some of the sleeping quarters and the bathroom here. Um, those are like brownish tan or even light blue. And then when you get in the back here, green doesn't show up again until the very end. So it's a pretty industrial color. Yes, I'll call it that. Areas that don't have a lot of where people aren't spending a whole lot of their time. Um, the tans, on the other hand, are a little bit more challenging. Um, so what I'm going to be looking for, there's a lot of this floor area in the living areas. And this floor area is different than this floor area. So the places where people spend a lot of time, like in the dining room and the control room and their bunk rooms and things like that, have kind of a light, I don't know, kind of, yeah, anyway. Um, whereas in the industrial areas, like the sale and back here in the, I'll call it the engine room where the steam from the reactor goes through all of this stuff to turn into propulsion. And that's, that's quite a to-do just to get hot water to turn a propeller. Um, those are somewhat darker. So I was looking at what have I got to work with? There's this uh, pork brown. This pork brown comes pretty close to the color in the sail. Um, and back in the engine room, and that might be okay. And then we've got these uh, escape hatches here and here, which are kind of the same color as the um, periscopes, basically. And there's, there's this bone white, which is kind of tempting to use Got a little bit of gloss in it and for things like this that that might be appropriate then we've got all these weird like flesh tones they're called there's like medium and flat and bronze and this this flat flesh actually looks close to what we might want on the floors here rather than using say buff, which is much browner. This dark sand isn't too bad, but this, these have more red in them. So I think, oddly enough, I'm going to use what's called flat flesh, which looks very orange in the bottle, but ends up looking like that when it dries. Um, the floors here and here and the only place it's used in what I'm doing today is the base of the beds down here okay so you got myself light green and flat flesh and white for the sheets all right um, the, the racks here I think this industrial kind of look you know for the periscopes and the escape hatches and the racks for the torpedoes all look like they should be kind of the same color. And I'm leaning toward this bone white for that. Just, um, it's a little darker than it looks in the pictures, but uh, the alternative is ivory and I think that ivory is too yellow the buff isn't too bad but it's a little bit too dark I think I'm gonna try the bone white um, at least I'm gonna try it uh, I'll do like one of the back torpedo racks maybe in it and see how it looks okay these little bits are going to be a challenge. There's there's these ladders built in to the molding on the escape hatches and on the inside of the hull of the submarine. Yeah. 
happy that these ladders are built in here. Here it's not too bad because uh, they're pretty, they're raised up pretty high. But when you start looking, it's a big model. When we look inside of here, it's not so big. So um, I'm going to paint those the base color. And then I'm going to use the technique of using the uh, fine tipped pen, I think, to try to actually paint those ladders after the base color is put in. Then there's this ladder. This ladder goes, this one's broken. It was broken. And it's sort of glued back on at least uh, as well as I could get it. The, uh, the ladder here, uh, you're supposed to be able to see through it. And so I'm going to paint the inside of the ladder, the little inside of the rungs, the green color, because that's what's underneath it. And the, if you look at the picture, the outside of the cap, car, uh, cabin kind of thing is also painted the green. Okay. And it's just the inside that's painted this uh, darker brown. So did I pick that color? No, I haven't picked that color yet. It's the color of the bunks, basically. Which on the instructions is also tan, right? Such a deal. Um, kind of a reddish brown color I could use red brown that's pretty dark though this color here or I could use the flat earth which is a little less red uh, but a lighter color again I probably could spend a better part of three or four days trying to um, Trying to match the colors. So I was going to use the cork. Okay. To recap. Cork brown going here and here. Okay. Those. And uh, the walkway, which you can't see, which comes out under here. Okay. I'm going to use the flat flesh for this color here. And for the floors here through the dining room and the control room and stuff. Going with the light green on the bulkheads and the floors. Um, yeah, what did I say I was going to use on this? Bone white, right? Use this bone white on the escape hatches and the tubes for the torpedoes. This one which looks a lot lighter in the bottle than it does. When it dries. And yeah, I was going to use that for the racks too, because those look like it's the same sort of industrial coating that you put on the inside of the escape hatches. And then I need to pick a color for uh, the insides of the beds. And there's some big ones here with lockers and stuff. Yeah, this is fun picking these colors, right? And so I'm not sure. I think it'd be too dark. There's no red that really works, so I think I might just go with um, with the flat earth. Okay. So I'm writing this down, and I'm going to call these crew floors the crew floor. Flesh. Weird, but that's what it is. Um, 
call them mechanical floors. We're going to need a pork brown. Um, escape hatches and torpedo racks are going to be bone light. Okay, and uh, the torpedoes, I, I have a huge range of metallics, uh, all the way from shiny chrome to uh, steel, which is quite dark. Um, I'm going to, I want the torpedo tubes to be, you know, shiny, but not overly shiny. So I'm going to use uh, dura aluminum. This is from Europe, so it's aluminium, not aluminum. It's dura aluminium, which is a little lighter. It's midway. It's midway in the range of uh, the amount of pigment in the metallics. So there's white aluminum, which is very light, and then aluminum, and dura aluminum, and then dark aluminum. Um, I'm going to use the dark aluminum later. The periscopes and things themselves are like hydraulic, and if you've ever seen those, they're always really bright and shiny. So I'm going to might I might use the, I'll usually use chrome, probably chrome on those as they slide in and out of their their tubes yeah they need they, they are very very polished steel usually and um, that's what I'll probably do when I paint those uh, that's uh, the basic color collection for that this particular piece okay um, I might start working on today. Just, I'm going to paint the thing. You're going to, you're going to gag at this, but I'm just going to paint it green because the inside of of this compartment is painted that green color. This doesn't go on until the instructions here. goes on as part of the second step this whole assembly gets slid in okay and then this goes sliding in in front of it this the parts really fit in the submarine but that goes in like that okay later so um, I'm gonna get a lot of this get the base coat on this done um, and then there's just, this is like huge amount of detail. This could end up taking forever to paint. So I'll warn you ahead of time, be prepared for forever on this little bit here compared to the rest of what I'm working on today. Okay, so we'll set this aside now that we have um, colors more or less Selected. Um, this is the only place in the submarine where this happens. There's uh, an inner shell here. Well, it goes on the back of this, and then this whole thing fits in. The whole thing fits in between the bulkheads. Okay, like that. So a bulkhead is attached to this. Maybe I'll show it to you. Do it upside down and backward. There we go. I had every orientation incorrectly done there. These pieces 
worked it together nicely before they were primed. So that's going to have to be trimmed a little bit there. Anyway, this goes in like this, and then the whole thing, once it's done, slides in like that. All right, and then the other bulkhead goes on there. So I'm going to be doing, oh yeah, I forgot about that. The, the hull hull, the outside and like up here are going to be painted um, dark gray. Okay. And the, um, this little bits here are actually going to show. bits that are actually going to show so at some point I'm going to paint just you know just where they'll show did you see that the top and the bottom of that I'll paint those that color oh let's see what else other look fine little things like I need to trim these little notches here because before they were primed they fit pretty well and now they're not fitting tightly and if it doesn't fit tightly it's not going to fit in the sub the tolerances are really pretty small this one needs to be filed down a little bit. I'll do that. Okay, there's not much to show on the inside of this bulkhead. There's some fire extinguishers, which will be painted red, and little bits on the top, and a staircase, which will be painted the same, um, the same cork brown as this, which is the walkway that goes through the torpedo room. The other side, on the other hand, I probably need to paint before I start gluing everything together. Okay. Um, I will need to, to do that. There isn't much on this side, but it's kind of interesting. There's a door, okay, which doesn't exist on this side. That's kind of weird, isn't it? Um, but. Yeah, I can't see the hatch on this side, but on this side you can. So I'm gonna paint that, and the hatchways are just are going to be a gray color. Um, probably not the same dark gray as uh, the hull. Uh, there's a vent. Those ventilation things show up here. So I'm, I'm probably just going to paint that the same color as the hatchways. These bits here, I thought, at first I thought, you know, those look like light fixtures for some reason. I don't know why. But when I looked at the picture, you can see that that's the washroom. And so I will at some point have to pick out the color of the washroom wall. And... Those are, the, those are the toilets. And as we found out last week, Wednesday, it's much more likely that the fixtures, the bathroom fixtures on a submarine were made out of steel or aluminum rather than porcelain because... Here, I hope that wasn't showing on the stream. Uh, because uh, porcelain is really heavy and it can crack and you can't replace it unless you carry extra ones with you and who would do that so you'd uh, be painting those probably dark aluminum you use the dark aluminum for that and those little bits there are going to be white because that's what they are they're the tp Anyway, um, yeah, I thought I had done a good job of picking colors, but I haven't. I need to paint this the color of the dining room, which is a really kind of light blue. I need to paint this the color of the bathroom, which is kind of pinkish buff color. And then down here, there's nothing here. I think that's... Um, 
that might actually be the gyroscope. Look. No, the gyroscope room is. So there's nothing there. So this is just going to be painted the whole color, the dark, the dark gray. Okay, well, that was that used up a lot of time. Uh, I'm going to start painting things and hopefully they won't get too terribly messed up. I'm going to paint this, this side of the bulkhead first and dry it, let it dry, and then I'll deal with this side later. But again, it would be next to impossible to paint this after it's inserted. And the rest of it isn't attached until like step three or four of the instructions. And so I need to pick the colors and paint the, the walls on this side of the bulkhead before, this, before I start putting this together. Which is probably okay and each of these guys are painted on two sides so they're going to be like painted and dried um, the inside of this is painted the tan color but the outside is painted the hull color this is all green oh. this goes inside the veil that's green. Yeah, okay, well. Let's start with torpedoes. I thought about how to paint these. So the, the front end of these, the warhead, is painted red. And there's kind of a nice dividing line here, so I can paint up to and into this little indentation and you know hopefully not have too much back and forth there is a dozen of these so what i could do is i could just hold them here and paint this and then what do i do with it right so i came up with this idea that i'm actually going to try is um since these are going to be painted later stick them into the sticky tack. Terribly concerned about the silver paint getting down onto where the red is going to be. Which is fine because the paint I'm going to be using is one of the metallics and it flows very freely. So it's going to get it's going to go past that demarcation line. It's painting in the other direction. When I am painting the red warheads of the torpedoes that You might say, well, you know, why are you starting with this when you have to wait for all of these other things for paint to dry in order to flip them over to do the other side? And I would say to you, that's an excellent point. I will set these aside. And what I'm going to start with then are the... Um, things that are painted tan. It's here. And I think I've got them all. So the things that are being painted kind of the industrial brown, 
you know, I'll call it that. The uh, working area at Brown is the, the walkway. That's the top. But I'm going to paint the bottom first. There are the three pieces of the um, of the sail. And these, I'm going to paint the bottoms first. And then the tops, the top, that has a hatch on it, right? This is the very, very bottom one. I do believe, yeah. Okay, because the escape hatch, no, the escape hatch goes, oh, I'm all messed up here. The escape hatch goes here. So this is the very bottom one. So this is the top of the bottom, okay? And this is where that goes in, ta-da. So this is the bottom of the middle. And this is the hatch on the top. That gets you to where the staircase goes. Well, that's the bottom of that, and these are the bottoms, and these are all the bottoms of the things, right? So that's going to be painted later, the hatch color. Painted the, yeah. The hatch color is the bone white. Oh, okay. And in the way I usually do this is I like to paint up to the, um, I like to paint up to these kinds of raised surfaces rather than painting down around them. So in keeping with that, what I should do is I should paint the bone white bits first, right? Right, 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 right. And that includes the inside of this and the inside of this. So how am I doing? I've managed to use a half hour and I've accomplished nothing. Pretty good work. I want these paints to be mixed well. So we have these wonderful little um, bearing things now. I'm going to take that off. Go on the turbo spinner in a minute. And I'm going to do the same thing with the other one since I'm doing it, right? Green that we're using. Good, I didn't knock it over. It's off. Yeah, two more. Good. I didn't squeeze the paint out, though. Lovely. That happened, but there it is. This is supposed to be relaxing painting with Dyson Dungeons, but basically what this is, is relaxing, avoiding painting with Dyson Dungeons. Doing an exceptionally good job of avoiding painting this. But I did want to go, I did want to explain to myself, if not no one else, uh, what was happening in terms of the uh, colors for the submarine because I'd spent some time trying to figure it out. And I did, in fact, do a little bit of homework in that I got all of these paints out of the paint holder racks prior to the stream, so you didn't have to watch me be off-screen hunting for colors. Oh, what did I do? I, um, I took my wash water, 
and forgot to bring it. So you get to watch me off screen anyway. Be right back. Yeah, so I came down early to do all this prep work so that you wouldn't have to watch me wander around pulling paints off of racks and things like that. And one of the things I did was I got my little cup of water to wash the brush and managed to uh, leave it behind. Nice, huh? Okay, so in talking out loud, what I found is that... Um, yeah, the way I like to paint things is to paint up to a raised surface. And so I was going to paint these, the uh, pork brown, starting on one side so I could flip it over to do the other side after that dried and discovered that there's like hatches that are painted a different color. And so I'm gonna paint those first. And since I'll have that color out, it's also the color of the inside of these escape. This is a passageway up to the sail to the top. And that's an escape hatch in the torpedo room. This has nothing on it. This has a hatch here. And this has the base of this ladder. And on the other side is a hatch. So this is actually going to have to be painted on both sides. And while that's drying, I'll just clip it on here and hold it up. This can just lay there. So, um, yeah, making an, a, a real effort to try to get this uh, done right, I managed to, yeah, waste a lot of time. So let me tighten this up and give it a good stir. This has been sitting for a long time. So with this vortex thing, combination of that and the little metal ball bouncing around on the inside, hopefully. Get that done. And while these are trying, um, I'll go back to the, I'll either go back to the green or the torpedoes. All right. Well, there, that was uh, that. You think this was a Monday? The, hopefully this, this color, I think this is a pretty decent color for this. I'm going to paint this hatch first. First application of paint to the submarine. The first moment of this stream that lives up to its title, relaxing painting. So here I am, all relaxed, painting the top of the hatch. And that paint, that paint seems to cover. I'm going all the way down to the bottom and onto the surface that'll be painted another color. As I said, I tend to paint up to it, but I don't want there to be just primer showing. So on this one, I'm gonna paint the hatch cover. This is actually a hatch on the bottom of this particular piece. Oh, look at that, yeah. So I moved the camera way up to have a bigger field of view because of just 
you know, the box top was really large. Right now, there isn't that much detail to see, so it's not like a mini where, where I want the camera closer so you can see what's going on. Again, I will apologize to all the submariners out there that I didn't do authentic color research. I'm just using the box top as sort of a color guide and using the paints that I have available without mixing or purchasing new ones that come closest to what's on that. I think sometimes you're called submariners, but I'll just repeat what I've said before. This isn't a submarine. It's a submarine. So, I'm not sure what's what's correct. Submariners or submariners. There we go. It's, it's that. Clip this because it has to dry on both sides. Jumping up. Okay. For the insides of those, I'm going to use a slightly bigger brush. And I'm painting the nice, nice job. These are the insides. This is uh, a passageway that goes up. Deck up to the next. There's a ladder in it that will be painted later. Will likely be painted this color, this whole thing. Oh, nice. Okay. I should have paid attention to the box. The entire thing is painted this color. Good. Um, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to paint the inside of it. While I'm holding it, making sure it's all covered, which it isn't. Might need two coats, which is unfortunate. Okay, so the bottom of this it gets cemented on, but the rest of this is visible, including the top, which is a hatch. So now what I will end up doing is painting the outside of it like this.
um, an example of almost but not quite planning ahead. So we'll check out the paint quality later. You can't really see the back of it when it's installed. Okay, this one technically is the same. You'll never see the back of it. Okay, the tops of the hatches um, are the hull color. And so those will get painted when the hull gets painted. So what I'm going to do with this one is something similar but upside down. The inside of the hatches are the escape hatch color. the ladder that I will attempt to make visible later. So we're going to put this upside down like this and paint the outside of it. Yeah, well, this is the right color, but it's really scabby. I mean, it's just it obviously he's going to need two coats, which is unfortunate. Other bits that get painted this color will also need two coats. And there are, uh, okay, well, I'm painting it this color, right? There are other things that need to be painted this color. So now I am thinking ahead ever so slightly. second coat on this I will be very much more conscious get a smooth surface um, yeah the other things that are this color are these um, these are the tubes for the snorkels and things and these have holes in them on the bottom so I can do this and then put them in this, uh, this the holes here to hold them up. Yeah, um, these glue in the bottom of the glue in here. Don't really want to get a lot of paint on here. I'll have to scratch it off later if I do. It's really scabby. 
This will look really scabby. I'm going to use a much bigger brush on this. So I'm going to brush it, um, get on as smoothly as I can here. Definite second coat. I like this paint because it had a little bit of gloss to it, which you would want in these situations. That's the kind of paint that would be used. Anyway, I, I don't think I'm ruining it. You know, if I'm really making a mess of this, if this paint turns out not to work, then what I will do is get brush and some isopropyl and depaint it and try a different color. I think with the second coat, you know, if this if this levels itself pretty well, and it looked like it did, this levels itself pretty well, I should be okay. A lot of it, but what there is is pretty visible. Yeah, we'll see how it looks with a second coat. With a lot of these colors, you know, paints like this, sometimes it, uh, you know, it turns out okay anyway. Well, as I start in the submarine here, I have to say that I've been I've been doing a pretty good job of fail. I thought I, you know, started out ahead of time, selecting colors, getting them all out here uh, so that I wouldn't be rummaging through the paint racks. And then it turns out that I wasn't thinking well enough ahead about what needed to be painted first and in what order. This paint color is just turning out to be, I don't know, less than perfect. It could be brushed, because otherwise it, uh, you get high points on it. that as I went along that it needed to be even if it looks kind of thin it just blobs up well, sanding these and making the surfaces smooth and then uh, maybe mess it up with the paint that's not that's not a good thing. So let these dry. We'll deal with a second coat later. The ones I'm really concerned about are not so much these, which can be second coated, but these look... to 
dry before I do the next color. Just these little hatchways. Okay, so there's that. First coat on the bottom of that. Poorly done. Poorly done. I think if I'm careful with the second coat, it should turn out okay. But it definitely needs recoating. Let's say that we don't have to use terribly much more of that. In many other places that our color will be going, which is just as well. All right. Um, yeah, a nicely mediocre start to the adventure of painting the submarine here. Leave this plastic tube off because the last time I put it on it just messed up the bristles. Okay, so what I was going to start by doing was painting the uh, bottoms These, including this one, which I'll um, do last. I'll do that one last. And these were going to be painted um, pork brown, this color. Hi. Um, the adventure is going, yeah, let's, let's say I did a really fine job of prepping the pieces and priming them. And I picked, I think the wrong paint for the first thing I painted. It's just, it's too gummy, I think in a way. So I painted these tubes. These are receptacles for the periscopes and things, and they just came out scabby. So and uh, they show kind of brush marks too. So I'm going to have to, um, I don't know, maybe I'll thin the paint. I hate to kind of do that. I'll see how the second coat turns out. Hopefully this color, this cork brown, will uh, flow a little better. I'm doing both sides of the uh, platforms for the sails. So we'll do this. This looks like something I would have painted when I was like nine years old. You know, I'm going to blame the paint. Okay, so what I want to do here is I want to not paint on the little bits of that. I want to paint around this fairly carefully, but I also want to brush this on as evenly as I can. So there isn't, there's only, you know, there's two on now, but there's only one on here. So I'll see if can do by getting that around. I might use a little brush first. 
Hi, new follower. Thank you so much for joining in. This is uh, Submarine Wednesday, and so far it's been going poorly. So I just have to, I'll just say that. Because um, the color I chose, which looks like the absolute right color for uh, parts of this model, the paint didn't behave. So this little light spot is supposed to be a hatchway. And the hatchways are painted a different color than the painting. Using a small brush to paint that detail in. And then I'm going to use a larger brush to finish off the rest of the surface. This is, is a vintage 1960s Renoir visible submarine. Yeah. Originally built when it first came out. And now I'm doing a nostalgia trip. And re and building another one. Hopefully be a little better more, more, uh, a little more detail I mean I didn't paint the hatchway for example a different color when I was young it's a big, bigger brush on this before it goes bad, I will. Because I want to not have brush marks all over this thing. It's a good move to do that. Okay, so these are going to get turned over. Keep it on the other side. Leave the inside of that unpainted because that's a thing that's going to be glued there. Um, yeah, actually, actually I didn't because Sunday is when I primed this. I'm going to miss out on it next Sunday though. Yeah. But <laughs> thank you for that. This is one of those things that needs to be painted. This is a side that no one will ever see. So I will carefully paint it. But the the edges will be seen. That's now so I don't forget them. Including these little wings here on the sides. Which go near the staircase.
And then this, this will not be seen either, likely. Didn't do a flip because you weren't... Where's... Who's not on? Who's the one who always asks for the flip? And who isn't here? Kind of, uh, it's unusual who is always watching. But yeah, I'll do a flip. Let me just get this painted. on the hatch there. I don't know if you can see it, but right there, there's a little blip that's showing. Piece of plastic that I hadn't noticed through all the prep I did. Now it's gone. I finished painting these guys and then I'll do a flip. Okay, let me do this. I'll do the... Do around the hatches first, and then um, paint. Yeah, I'm glad I used the bigger brush, because otherwise uh, the brush marks would have been pretty obvious. going to paint this one until I paint this side. This is, I'm do the bottom first and then I'll flip it over and do the top. Now, I know about what that's like, having had my teeth rebuilt not too long ago. too concerned about the edges because the edges actually need to be painted the hull color I mean it's a cutaway right and so when you cut it away what you do is reveal the metal underneath so technically the edges on these things one side is glued in okay so you won't see that at all like the back side here is glued in but the front side is a cutaway so I'm going to paint those the color of the hull, which is a dark gray. Just need to dry. Where can I even do the flip? I want to just, I want to flip this pin here. Just little bits of pin flip because I got stuff all over the place here. So as this is drying, I can see that it's exactly the right color. But as this is drying, I can see that it covered very clearly. And I'm going to try something. The 
Yes, as I continue to work on the little bits of the submarine here, um, I'm going to uh, put a little bit of thinner in this paint because it's it just isn't laying flat. It's like too viscous. Just, just a little bit. Try to um, make it flow a little better and lay flatter. Okay. And they're almost dry, so I can almost put a second coat on these sooner than later. But the level of incompetence I'm showing today is truly impressive. I had a lot of success with the other models, with the minifigs I was doing, but um, I don't know. I'm not sure what's happening here. So whoever is showing, you know, following for the first time or watching this for the first time, I'm usually not this um, messy and disoriented. Uh, some, some of you might disagree and say, yes, you are. Uh, but no, I'm actually not. It's just what happened was that um, as I started painting, I realized that there were certain things that needed to be done first in a certain order that I hadn't planned before. And then the paint, which is just the right color, uh, turned out to be just almost unusable. It's just really, un yeah, unhelpful. So what I'm going to do, since the insides of these are the most important these this is an escape hatch and a conduit and a passageway is i'm going to mix up the paint and second coat the insides and then i'm just going to do the outside some other time actually i don't even need to do them now i don't need these pieces yet um because what i i did need to do was paint the hatchways on these guys so that i could finish the brown but anyway Let's just get on with it. We'll see if this helps. Here do is I'm gonna take the other end of the toothpick and hold it that way because then I can rotate it. The uh, when I put the pointy end in it didn't hold well enough. And I think this will work. So I'm gonna second coat these with a big brush because I need to not have brush marks on them. That toothpick when I didn't need it. You need to remember that this, the top that's on the toothpick, the hole, needs to be painted as well because that shows. That's the top of the tube. These are upside down at the moment. Okay. So I'm going to give that bone white a stir again. Give it a stir or a thorough a mixing as I can. These came out okay. Okay, yeah, that's okay. Until it was brushed and not spray painted, but this was not an airbrush kind of 
thing. Okay, so let's see what happens with this. I'm going to use um, a fairly large brush. Okay. Not as big as I did for the floor because it's smaller surface. Fairly large brush because I want it to spread evenly as much as I can. And this is much better. I can rotate them. So I'm just going to paint down the sides here. This looks like it's working okay. So this should be okay. okay. Too many brush marks on it. Seems to cover it okay. Need to get a lot of paint on the brush and just get it on there. Just rotate it here and make sure that there aren't any brush marks. And we have salvaged the snorkel tubes. Making sure I got those. I'll be probably scraping paint off of uh, some of the surfaces where they uh, where they're cemented in. Okay. No, it's really hard to keep the paint off of all of the spots where the cement will go and still get a decent coverage. So that, yeah. So at least from a, from a respectful distance, as one might say, these will look okay. Since the color is out and it's on the brush, to paint the insides of these. I'm not going to paint the outside until later, but I want to get the, do the insides of these the second coat. And then I'll just, I'll paint the outside of them after this dries enough to flip it over. Okay, that, uh, that looks okay. That'll do.
a ladder on the inside of that that will get painted somehow. I'm not sure how um, at another time. And I've got the paint out. Shall I take a chance and do this? Why not? There might be a little touch up on this later. We'll find out. Yeah, we'll just do the same thing to this one. Okay, well, as has turned out in relaxing painting more than once, when something looked like it was just a disaster, and, you know, there's no way it was going to work, it ends up being okay. That's why it's so relaxing, right? There we go. So there's stuff painted. These, these um, actually look okay. So what I'm going to do next is paint the other sides of these. Well, not the other side of this one, because that's the hull color. That just, that's the very, very tippy top of the sail. So that one does not get painted on the outside until the hull is painted. Push these. Um... And these are going to be painted then on the other side, this side, and that side, and this side. These are now the tops. This one needs just a little bit of edging. Oh, that's not good. Paint had come through and messed up that side of it. That's not good. So I just need to do a little bit of edging around this. I'll paint this one first just to get that done. Um, get out the large brush again. This cork brown just isn't good anymore. You always mix your paints. Hi, who? Thanks for joining in. And it stopped. It was playing before. I know it was when we started. So at break time, we'll get that fixed. But thanks for noticing that. And you missed the flip. Um, but if you hang on for a little bit after I paint these guys, I'll do another one just for you. You probably had noticed that here in West Michigan, there is no precipitation today, which is unusual because we almost always get precipitation on relaxing painting days. But just for you who, just for you, it's supposed to snow Friday. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, it's going to start raining tomorrow. and continue raining, and except for snow. So the rain will be interrupted by snow 
occasionally. Uh, anyway, the precipitation will continue until Saturday, but the snow is on Friday. And who is especially happy about that because who loves to drive in the snow, right? And you've gotten to drive in the snow. I think this is like the fourth Friday in a row that, um, that there's been snow or sleet or freezing rain or something awful. We need to keep up need to keep up that tradition just for you So there's, that's how that works, is that um, you can get the paint through on the other side. Does it, yeah, when you get too much on and it gets in the hole there. So those of you who are watching this, this is not necessarily how you're supposed to paint things, okay? I'm not an expert. What I am is uh, doing nostalgia. Is I'm building a submarine that I built. Something like... No, I hate to admit it, but um, like almost 60 years ago. Oh, man, that was good. I just painted the microphone. I did. I um come from. Cats visited earlier and there's uh hair. The only way to do that is just that. You know, just pull it off and then repaint. So yeah, I first did one of these like 60 years ago when they first came out. And let's just say that I'm hoping that the quality of the painting and the build this time is significantly better than it was then. That is yet to be seen, isn't it? So should I clean the paint off the microphone or should I just leave that as a souvenir of my ineptitude? This catwalk thing has texture on it, so I don't want to lose that. Here, make sure the edges get painted. Get some of the paint off the brush, and then give this a once, just a once over across so that the paint layer is uniform and thin. I'm getting 
little bits of dirt. I've been painting for months and months. And then now today I'm getting like hairs and lint. Okay, well, that's going to look okay. That's going to look pretty decent. Um, all right, what have we got? We've got uh, these things, which I have to say turned out okay. I'm really kind of surprised. The color is good. The gloss is okay. There's some brush marks on it, but those won't be that noticeable as put together. So I'll give that like a B plus. These guys... Um, yeah, they need a little bit of touch up. You know, that it's kind of drying. There's just little spots here that aren't covered. But the, um, they're going to show. So they need to be painted. Those are escape hatch. This is an escape hatch. The inside came out okay. I'll be able to paint the ladder. Any other real obvious flaws on that? This one, you'll never see the back of this, so I'm not too worried about that. But the front, the front came out okay. The top you'll see, and the ladder is okay. So I'm going to leave those there. Leave those there, and. What shall I do next? I think I think I will do a flip for who. Clean these brushes out. I'll be using this brush to apply green paint in a bit because they're fairly large surfaces that need to be greened. We know this in a little while. Um, but I'm not real anxious to do the green yet. I want to do a flip for who. I will flip an alligator clip. Drop one and flip this one instead. Okay. Yep. Yeah, it's on the floor. So I know where it is. So those bits in this color, I'll be using that color only like on three other pieces, I think, in the entire submarine. Well, I might use it, you know, since it's turning out okay. A lot of the equipment in the back in the machine room, all of that stuff looks to be the same sort of color. So I might give it a gold act on that too. We'll see. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to do this though. This color here. Dark gray, dark gray. I'm going to be at the very end of all of this. If I'm brave, if not, I'll have Nikki do it. Um, the whole of this ship is, you know, it's gray, but I'm going to uh, paint it with the airbrush so it's smooth. The hull will be painted dark gray. Okay. And the... Um, there are certain, there are little bits of this that are going to be showing on the inside, dark gray, right here, and right here, and here. So I'm going to paint those dark gray. And the other thing I'm going to paint dark gray is the back side of the, uh, the torpedo tubes, because a little bit of this would show as well. The other things that we painted dark gray at some point will be the edges of the like bulkheads and things because this is a cutaway and so those will be painted that color so i'm going to be painting now um just just to get this done these bits here with this color
for the sort of brown color that I used for this is going to be the same color that will be used way back at the end of the submarine in the engine room. So there's green bulkheads and maybe the same color for the equipment, the piping and everything, because it's it is the right color for it. Instead, that would be the end of it, but I will end up using it more. Yeah, anyway, we're just going to keep plugging away at this for a while and see how it goes. Oh, I lied again. How did I do that? Yeah, I was going to use that. That's the same color I'm going to use for the uh, torpedo racks. So we'll be painting those that nasty color that wasn't working for me that needed two coats. Yeah, paint the backs first and let those dry. And then I'll do the tops. And you might not see much of the bottoms, but, you know, you just never know for sure. Okay, so we're we'll, going to paint a little bit of uh, dark gray here. These, these are areas. This is a very nice color. It is appropriate for the external hull of the submarine. I'm catching the spots that may end up showing. after the bulkhead is installed. There's some areas on the top here. And on the bottom. And I got it on here. I probably shouldn't have. Okay, I'll explain that in a little while. The um, the bulkheads slide in here, and there's kind of a raised edge. And on one hand, it probably would be okay for them to be this color, but those this this raised edge here probably needs to be painted the same color as the inside of the wall so that's going to be green on the inside here and here yeah and we'll try to do that with some care this is the back of the torpedo tubes And this is something that is designed to not be seen, but might be. Okay. So in the event that it is, it'll be it'll be the right color. We'll let that dry. Okay. The other thing is, this might show. 
I just thought of that, is that since this fits in and there's a gap here, I need to paint this that color as well. The inside is going to be painted green. But there is a slight separation between this and the outer hull. So just to be sure, the parts that are visible will be gray. And as I was saying, actually, I'm going to paint it now just so you can see it. Since this is a cutaway, I'm going to have the edges of all this stuff painted this gray color as well. This is going to be total. That's totally invisible. No one will ever see that. Okay. So as I was saying, um, this industrial kind of beige color. That is the inside of the escape hatches and the periscope and snorkel tubes also looks to be the color that should be used for the torpedo racks. It's like, this is how we paint our metal on the submarine. And so these need to be coated in that needing two coats beigey paint as well. And I'm gonna paint the bottoms of these and then I think I'm going to take a break. It'll be just about noon. And that will be actually a pretty decent time to just take a stop there. And during break, I'm going to look for colors. Do you remember this other bulkhead? Is green on this side. That's fine. It's all just green, and then I'll paint the fire extinguishers later. Um, but on this side, we have the color I just used and put away down on the bottom. <laughs> okay, that's lovely. Then this is the dining room, which is a slightly bluish kind of color. And then this is the bathroom. And that's a different color altogether. It's not quite any of the others. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find one for that because I need to paint these walls in the detail before I glue this all together. The torpedo tubes and the bunks and things all get glued onto here. But then this whole thing gets put in to the submarine and there's no way to paint those. There's no way to paint those without um, not taking the whole thing apart again. So, yeah, the inside of the hull needs to be painted that color too, but that might need to wait a little bit. Anyway, I need to pick two different colors, and I need to paint this the color that I just painted and put away, and I'm going to pull it out. There's nothing under here. Um, on the sub model, there is nothing there at all, and so I think the floor goes on top of this. It makes sense that it would be glued onto the top. So I'm going to paint this whole thing that gray color. At this point, we'll just keep we'll just keep going back and forth with things until we get them right.
Okay. Have fun with um, it's like brush marks all over that. It didn't be there. The rest of it went really well. There's no brush marks on those at all after it dried. But um, this is just not, not behaving the same way. Well, that's one way to use up the time. Okay, I want that brush to be cleaned because I'm using the bigger brush to get this paint on evenly on these surfaces. So kind of a waste of paint using the bigger brush, but um, I get way too many brush marks on it. Okay, so we'll let that dry bad as it is. Deepest, darkest recess of the submarine model. So these things need to be painted this color. And it has been needing two coats. But this is the bottom. Anyway, we'll just see how it works. Handy dandy holding on to it thing. Let's start with this one and put paint on it. Make with this bigger brush and brushing across. on the bottom I'll be able to get away without with one coat the top might need two when it comes down to it or up to it You think the bigger brush seems to help? Huh. It uses, it wastes paint, but it spreads it much more evenly on the surface. So that's good. That's part of what we're aiming for.
plinth thing. So he says something. Anyway, if I can get these done on this side, then I can flip them over and do the other side, the top, much more carefully than the bottom, because that part will show. If you were here last week when I unboxed these, you might remember that there are, there are little pads on the top on which the torpedoes rest, and there's this little nubbins. Yeah, maybe there are bolts. Maybe they're pads. Can't really tell that I was going to say. Am I going to take the time to try to um, paint those or highlight those in any way or just assume that they were painted over when these racks were painted this industrial buff kind of color? That is something we'll need to decide. So let me just say that this technique of using a big brush and a fairly large amount of paint um, worked pretty well. And I might need to do two coats on the top, but one coat should be sufficient on the bottom. All right, that having been completed, at least up to that point. Um, I'm going to take a break. I will see if we can get the music working, if it stopped. Come back and squeeze out more of this bone white paint, and I squeezed out way too much of it already. Uh, but yeah, better that than not. These guys are turning out okay. Okay, these are the tops of things, and I, that color is a pretty decent color, so that's going to look all right. Um, yeah, you can see the dark gray. This is going to be the color of the hull when it's done, and that'll be airbrushed on, so it'll be a lot more even than, than it is now. It'll look, it'll look like that, and I think that that's actually a really appropriate color for the exterior of the submarine. Um, so a little more of this. These guys will wait for a while. Um, we'll do the backs of the torpedoes after I flip these over and put one coat on. Then I'll do the torpedoes and come back and second coat the tops of the torpedo racks if that's necessary. And then um, Probably paint green. We'll probably start painting green. There's a lot of that to do. The whole inside of this, the front of this bulkhead, and this bulkhead. Um, no, that's not how it's going to go. Yeah, I mean, this, I'm going to paint the uh, fire extinguishers first. The, the steps, I don't know. Should the steps? I think the steps should have been painted this kind of cork brown color, the color of the walkway. Let's see if that paint is still good. If it is, I'm going to paint them right now. Yeah, there, there was a lot of it there. So um, I'm going to paint these the color of the walkway. And then I'm going to paint the fire extinguishers red because I like to paint up two things rather than down to them. Hence that this be the same color as the passageway in there. That's done. All right. So break time. I'll come back. Uh, reevaluate where I am at and how things are going, and hopefully make some decent progress on this. There are more pieces out here than there are up there, so I guess that's a thing.
these stairs are on. I'm going to paint these the same color just to do it. Um, okay, because these stairs are from one walkway to the other. This whole thing somehow. Most of painted green, but I'm going to say that the stairs are the same color as the floor from which they are rising. At least this way you'll be able to see them. I'm hoping that green paint levels nicely because there's fairly large areas of it. And during break. Okay, well, it is time for a break. I'm going to do that and come back and resume painting the vintage submarine. See you in a bit.
Hi, back from break. Um, yep, that dried. Actually, it doesn't look bad. It's just the bottoms, but um, yeah, we need to paint the, the fronts. A little touch up on the bottom yet. There's places where it'll show like these little prongs down underneath the front edge. Go against the back wall. These are attached to the side wall. Um, yeah, so what I'm going to do with these is I think With these three on the clip here, that's actually that part is glued in. Yeah, that's solid enough to paint the grip anyway. Hold it with that. For these three, that'll work fine. Probably get a clip short of what I need. Here, with these I can here. That's where it gets into the wall. So I just need to make sure that that's painted. So I'm going to clip it on the back one attaches to the bulkhead this way. I can do the same with this. Gentle with the brush, that should be fine. Yeah, and I need one more. How will I manage that? I guess I will hold it like this. I don't know. Maybe this one, if I do this one first, this one might be dry enough to unclip by the time I get to that one, which will be last. So what I'm going to do here is um, use some more of this bone paint, bone white paint that I've been squeezing out in much bigger quantities than I need. And I finished painting the first coat, do a first coat on these torpedo racks. Making some notes here about the colors I'm using. I'm ending up using a whole lot more colors than I thought I would, but that's okay. Okay, I'm going to set these guys aside because they are done. Actually, I might. Since they're done, I can put them back in the parts box. Here I am putting pieces in the parts box.
There aren't very many pieces left in the parts box. One of them is quite complicated. Um, Okay. They did decide on the color for the lockers and the bed frames. But one thing I did notice is that there's this, this little bit of floor here. This little bit of floor here that needs to be painted um, the cork brown. No, that's not the color. Um, it's, it, I haven't used that color yet, so I haven't messed up. That doesn't, that, there's a tiny touch of it in the torpedo room, and most of it is in the sections that are done a little bit later. Um, Yeah, need to squeeze a bunch more out of this bottle. Get out the big brush, and I was going to paint this one, this one first. And hope that it dries in time for me to use the get it in all the little nooks and crannies here without getting too many paint blobs on it. So I want this to dry in time for me to use the alligator clip on the other. And this will probably need two coats it looks like. And see what it looks like when it dries. But yeah, that alligator clip thing is working pretty well. That's good. That big brushes, keeping it from having brush marks on it. Anyway, thank you for bearing with me on Submarine Wednesday. As is often the case, it started out, I mean, often the case on relaxing painting, is it started out like, oh, this is going to be a disaster. And then through persistence and probably a little bit of luck, it turned out to be okay. Like this paint color, for example, that started out when I first started using it um was just not good it wasn't nothing was working okay but then then i figured out how to brush it because of the texture of the paint it's a little different than some of the others um figured out how to brush it and i got the paris the, the snorkel tubes working okay and now i'm getting the torpedo racks this one is not clasping as firmly as the others, getting these mostly okay.
tendons that attach to the bulkhead. This is the side that shows that in the front. what that alligator clip was used for, won't we? See those little prongs got painted here. Yeah, somehow, I'm glad I checked this one. This side is a side that shows. Side that needs to be well painted. It's the first one I did, and I think I can unclip it without too much damage. And we'll come back around to that one and do second coat on that one. Yeah, at some point. Even though it, even if this wasn't uneven, and it is, I'd probably want to do a second coat anyway, just to check to make sure that the coverage, like I got all the surfaces, because as I'm looking at this, it's easy to, kind of easy to miss a surface. Anyway, with using the larger brush and um, probably because I thinned it a little bit, this paint is, is going okay. This It's actually dried already, which is pretty amazing. Um, I think I can go back over these and do a second coat since the paint is still good. Second coat helps a lot. Here we are relaxing painting with Dyson Dungeons. Let me tell you a little bit about Well, I'm second coating these Dyson Dungeons. Um, we are we call Dyson Dungeons because we play Dungeons and Dragons. That's how we started <coughs> and continue to this day as an adventuring group. Being slowly and methodically through the world that our DM Alexis created. A very intricate and fun world in which to play. And we started uh, playing well over a year ago and then decided as we were playing, wouldn't it be cool to stream it because people do that. And so we have been now 
for a very long time, over a year, continuing our campaign um, in, of Dungeons and Dragons, um, which streams with live chat on Sundays at 2. We stream three Sundays a month, and there is a schedule that if I were really on top of things, I'd be able to tell you what they are, but I think it's on like Discord and Twitter, all sorts of social media that I never go to because I'm not a very social person. Um, and you can check out which Sundays, but Sundays at two with live chat. And then you can see them afterwards on YouTube. These are the episodes of Dungeons and Dragons. You can see them on YouTube and or, and or listen to them as a podcast. Okay? And that is something we invite you to do. So as we were, as, as we um, started playing, we started playing, you know, with a plastic mat with a grid on it, which was fine. And then we had these little flat minifig things that we used, and that was fine. But um, Alexis decided that it would be kind of cool to get a 3D printer. Actually, the 3D printer, I think, was sort of independent of, but became an integral part of Dyson Dungeons, because then we printed um, dungeon tiles started out with just some sort of scatter pieces, some pillars and some walls. And uh, yeah, they started looking pretty cool and they became an integral part of the show. And at one point it was, well, you know, if we're making these and painting them, why don't we stream that too? And so that was eventually along the way, the genesis of relaxing painting with Dyson Dungeons, it was the painting of the dungeon tiles that we were using in the stream in our Dungeons and Dragons campaign. So this is not what Dyson Dungeons originally did or even its main purpose. Um, it continues to be a Dungeons and Dragons campaign and a really good and exciting one as well. But we started doing this and it, the, we started doing lots of, you know, painting minifigures and characters and campfires and trees and all sorts of things that could be used as props, I guess, in our D&D campaign and thought we would share it with you in this stream of relaxing painting, which I hope, would, you know, in more involves a fair amount of painting. When I'm doing this, it involves a lot of complaining about uh, the weather and things not working the way I would like them to and the color is not coming out right. But actually, uh, there, there are also periods like right now where I do painting. Sometimes we do like speculative kinds of things. We, I've talked about uh, potlucks at Thanksgiving. We, I did a whole series of things talking about uh, the difference between the perception and reality of fractions and decimals, percentages. thing I was going to talk about, I, I, I can do that now, it's holidays, okay? So St. Patrick's Day just is about to, to happen, and I, I mean, it's not really a holiday in the same sense as like in the U.S. Independence Day or Thanksgiving or Christmas or anything, but, but still, you know, people use it as a reason to celebrate. So this was, this was an interesting phenomenon. In Chicago, there's always a big parade and they dye the river green as part of the St. Patrick's Day events. Okay. And they did that last weekend. 
Now, St. Patrick's Day is what? Uh, Friday? Yeah. So it's like, you, why, why did they do this an entire week ahead of time? They always, all these festivities are on Saturdays because obviously Saturday, the day after the official St. Patrick's Day, is much, much closer in time, like a day to the actual St. Patrick's Day than an entire week beforehand. And that, that raised the question of the, you know, the celebration of, or the perception of the celebration of holidays. So why is it that an entire week before the actual holiday is seen to be more appropriate for the celebration of that day than the day after, you know? And so I began to think about that, and it seems that what happens is that once the holiday happens, or the, or the day of the celebration, it's over, right? But that the time ahead of it is all part of the celebration. And then you begin to think about like retail, right? So you start seeing Christmas stuff now. Um, practically before Thanksgiving, right? <laughs> Just making sure the bottoms of these look okay. Even though you don't might not see them very much, there's no no reason for them to not be painted well. So yeah, so the Christmas stuff starts like before Thanksgiving. Um, Halloween stuff is out on October first. It's uh, so the time. It seems like the time before the holiday, sometimes. A, time a good deal a long way before the holiday is all part of the holiday but then it abruptly ends boom the day happens and it's over in fact on the retail scene we, we were looking forward to the after Christmas sales of decorations well we actually discovered this on Halloween we we're going to do the after Halloween sales of, uh, of Halloween decorations right so we went, we went to the store after Halloween, and there wasn't anything there. There was, I shouldn't say that, there was like one small shelf of a few little scattered pieces of things. And that's all that was left. And this was like the day after. So it wasn't a forever past the holiday sort of thing. And then we said, well... Oh, you know, what happened? Where, where did all the extra stuff go and when did they sell it? Well, we discovered that when we started looking at Christmas sales because we, we bought a lot of Christmas lights this year. Um, and we were looking for sales and the after Christmas sales started around the 20th. Everything was on sale and there wasn't much left, but what there was was seriously marked down and it was that's the thing the post holiday sales are now starting a week before the holiday and if you wait till after the holiday it's gone everything it's like it's all disappeared okay um this is going to be painted green Okay, because that's what the instructions say and what the box top says. So that's going to be painted green. The inside of this thing is all going to be green. So that's going to be big brush. Try not to have brush marks kind of quick work. And the um, other side of this is going to be painted two different colors. This is the bathroom. And I picked out a color for that. And this is the dining room, and I picked out a color for that. But before I paint those, I'm going to be painting the little bits so that I can paint up to them. So there's a ventilation grate and a door, 
and toilets and TP rolls. So those will get painted and then I'll be painting the base color for those. Um, yeah. And then this is the torpedo front. It goes in like this and the, there's an open torpedo tube and this has a huge amount of detail on it. And so what I think I'm going to do, because although I like to paint up to the detail, there's just so much on this that if I changed the detail first and then tried to paint the green onto it, it would just be a disaster. Like there's these little uh, conduits. I think these are like wires because they're going to electrical control boxes and dials and things. And those need to be highlighted um, in another color. I'm thinking I'm going to use a fine point felt tip pen to try to do that, but there's like these dials and things and bezels. And I can't think of any other way of doing those other than painting green first. I'm going to paint everything green and then uh, start painting the detail. And I'm guessing this is going to take forever, just forever. The one exception to that is going to be the fire extinguishers here and here, because these need to be painted uh, before I paint the green. I'm going to do that for sure. And I might as well do these at the same time. So these are red and at the very tops, there's uh, a little metallic valve thing. I'm going to paint those uh, metallic and paint those the same color as the toilets. I could just executive decision here. dark aluminum. Okay, I think I pulled that out earlier. It's alum aluminum, that's for the torpedoes. One is for the snorkels. Thing. I don't know. There, I put it with the washes so I couldn't find it. <laughs> okay. Um, before I do that, though, as I'm looking here, I painted this side of the steps well, but I failed to paint the other side of the steps well. And so I'm just going to take a little bit of paint off the tip of the bottle here and uh, touch up the, the parts that just, even the parts that can't be seen but that little bit that could be seen. Paint it. Uh, let's see, I think I will paint the fire extinguishers and then I'm going to, my thinking. Um, tips of the torpedoes, which I buried in this goo, to hold them are red and the fire extinguishers are red and I hate to keep creating the need for more and more and more colors all the time uh, but I'm not seeing a way around it here I think I think I will paint them the same red as the those just you wouldn't be able to see the difference anyway in the distance in the distances of between things and I put all these parts back in the tray and then the table shakes and yeah they make a lot of noise not well done If you've been watching this stream for any length of time, you know that I spend a good deal of my time talking about how I'm doing things that probably shouldn't be done that way, or are not best done that way, or 
that sort of thing. So this is not a show about how to do painting. There are many other shows where there are people who are very, very good at this. We're very good at this. Um, can demonstrate the, the proper way of doing this kind of thing. What I'm doing is I'm just putting paint on things and rambling on while I do it. Hope that that's okay for you because, yeah, I mean, that's, that's what I'm doing. Anyway, I'm painting these fire extinguishers red and I don't need this little brush. I'm going to use a little brush to paint the tiny little tops of the fire extinguishers in metallic color. Use a bigger brush to do this. It'll be faster and more even. Including the tops so that will get painted metallic later. And we'll let this... The tops of these will be painted the same color as the toilets. That seems appropriate, doesn't it? Um... I just want to make sure that they're covered in red and then we'll let this dry and I'm going to paint the torpedo of cells while this is drying. Then I'm going to do the little bits on the top. And when I do the little bits on the top, I will do the toilets on the other side. This particular red has a little bit of gloss in it. It's not glossy red. I was tempted to use the glossy red, but then I thought, no, nothing else really is glossy, and that would just show too much. And the glossy red tends to be a little more viscous, and so it's harder to spread. Sometimes this needs a second coat, and if it does, after this dries, I'll see that and I'll be able to put that on real quickly. That's all that was. And I think as I'm looking at this, you know, this, the gray is kind of showing through. There will be a second coat of red. And that means that the fronts of the torpedoes will, unless I choose a different color, and I might, there's another red that looks pretty decent. Maybe I'll use this little it's dark vermilion that um, bloody. If that bloody red worked, that would be good because it's got more gloss in it. But it doesn't look to cover very evenly. So I think I'll just live with <laughs> two coats of this red paint. So I'm going to let that dry, and now I'm going to go get back to the torpedoes, and I'm going to paint the the backs of all the torpedoes um, duraluminum, or as this says, duraluminium. I thought I'd give this a try. This is one way to hold them all without holding them with my fingers. So looking at this, let me just say that having thinned and mixed the, that bone white paint, it actually turned out, it really worked well. And because of that, I'm feeling more confident but that's the color to use on all the machinery back in the uh, in the engine room at the back of the submarine. Now I've got stuff scattered all over here. So let's um, let's use kind of a big bristle brush. So it worked. Get the red out of it. This paint is 
very fluid. It's designed for airbrushing, so it's pretty thin. Which means it'll flow on nicely and not show any brush marks, which is nice for what I'm doing here. Now, so among the lessons about what not to do when you're painting that I can show you are basically, you know, choose your colors ahead of time, make sure that they're well mixed, um, use the right brush. Don't clutter up your workspace. <laughs> Try not to hold things with your fingers if you can avoid it. Um, If you were to watch the stream, I would think, you know, if you catch a good three or four episodes of this stream while I'm, while I'm doing it, you would have, I would say, probably all the lessons you would need about what not to do when you're painting. But I'm hoping that the, the conversation and the, you know, whatever, the relaxing part is something that you enjoy. But if you're trying to learn how to paint, you know, like if you're new to this and you want to get tips on how, how to do a really good job painting, you know, shading and texturing and just all sorts of stuff, I do have to say that there are, there are other streams that are designed for that. This stream is designed to be um, not those things. This stream is designed to introduce you to Dyson Dungeons and to be relaxing as you listen to me babble on about stuff. So the babble on today was about well, holidays start way early and end abruptly and that came home you know, I was talking to my brother, and it was like, oh, they just dyed the Chicago River green, so this must be St. Patrick's Day. And it was, no, today is uh, Tuesday. St. Patrick's Day is Friday. Well, then why did they dye the river green? I said, well, they actually dyed the river green on Saturday, so it's been like three days since they since they dyed it. Um, well, why is that if St. Patrick's Day isn't until Friday? And it's, well, apparently what we do here is for holidays and celebrations is that it's not only acceptable, but it seems to be the custom that it's perfectly fine to do it way early. Like, the, the parade and the dying and everything is always on a weekend in Chicago. Um, but you can't do it just the day after St. Patrick's Day because St. Patrick's Day is over, right? So the holiday is done. And so it has to be done before the holiday. And that meant in this case, an entire week early. That seemed to not be a problem leading to a, uh, you know, sort of discussion about our experience with post-holiday sales and how post-holiday sales now are happening the week before the holiday happens. And if you wait to start looking for Halloween decorations or Christmas decorations at a discount, because, you know, post-holiday, there's always a sale of the few things that nobody wanted to buy that are now inexpensive and you definitely want to buy them because the price is right. Um, yeah, that those post holiday sales are now happening before the holidays. So Christmas lights were on sale around the 20th of December. You would expect, we would have expected that they would have been on sale on the 26th. But no, by the time you get to the 26th of December, there's just nothing left other than one small shelf 
tucked way over in the corner somewhere. You know, and that's that's consistent with the uh, with the marketing of. You know, you'd think I can tell the difference between things that are painted silver and things that aren't painted yet, but that's turning out to not be the case. Anyway, that that kind of is consistent with the uh, the retail celebration of holidays, because. You know, Christmas decorations now go on sale well before Thanksgiving. You don't even wait until the day after Thanksgiving anymore. It's like beginning of November. In fact, there was one. I think this is this is true. We um we went looking for post Halloween sales, right? So we went to the store that, you know, that sells Christmas decorations and lights and all of that, um, and Halloween stuff, lawn balloons and giant spiders and whatever, thinking, well, there might be some cool things on sale. So this was what, like, it was not immediately after Halloween. It was a day after that. It was, I think, November 2nd. And we walked into the store thinking, oh, there'd be a couple of shelves of Halloween decorations. And there weren't. The whole the whole holiday area was covered with Christmas decorations. So this is November 2nd. Needless to say, the post-Halloween sale area didn't have very much to offer. There was one shelving unit, just one little shelving unit. Um, that had this is a pretty decent color okay I picked it it's not too bright just rotating this to make sure I got all of the sides of all of the torpedoes yeah so there's like one shelving unit with maybe a dozen little things on it from Halloween but there were two full aisles of Christmas decorations already for sale on November 2nd no, I don't know what happened to the... I didn't even... I don't remember even seeing a lot of Thanksgiving decorations. And it, Thanksgiving was a month away. I guess that's not a big decorating thing, though. You know, you get some paper turkeys and some cornucopia things and maybe some uh, wax fruit or whatever to put on your table for Thanksgiving, but there you go. So if you, that's that's all part of the same trend, I guess, which is that holidays exist before the date, sometimes for a very, very long time. But then they're over when they're over. Ooh. And that's why you have your St. Patrick's Day parade whole week before St. Patrick's Day instead of just one day after, when that was just so much closer in time than the actual event. So there, that's the rambling, more or less totally irrelevant conversation of relaxing painting for today. That's the theme. Usual ice blurted out like 10 times more paint than I needed, especially with these metallics. It doesn't take very much of it to cover a large area, and it covers it pretty well. They're relatively opaque paints, which is kind of nice. Yeah, what's the next one coming up? Oh, yeah, Easter. 
the Easter candy. We were in the store not too long ago, and um, yeah, I'm sure the Easter candy popped out right after Valentine's Day, right? Because we were looking for, that's right, we were looking for after Valentine's Day sales of these little, the little hearts with the sayings on them. They're kind of, <coughs> kind of chalky. In fact, they, they look like chalk. They have the same consistency as chalk when you look at the candies. So we thought, well, maybe we'd pick up some Valentine's Day candy on sale. This was two days later, the 16th or something. And there was nothing to be found. But there were several displays of uh, Easter candy. And it wasn't, Lent hadn't even started yet, you know, for those who faith includes Easter and Lent, you can understand the timing of that. Uh, um, and for those of you who don't, that that's, starts right after Mardi Gras or Carnival. Okay, So let's just say it that way, more secularly, that um, Easter candy, the little eggs and Heaps and things were on display two days after Valentine's Day, and all the Valentine's Day stuff was gone. It seems to be the way of things, is that the holidays, there's a huge buildup to the holiday that goes on sometimes for two months, and then the holiday happens and it all disappears and move on to the next. Part two, we should have known that given our experience trying to buy on sale Christmas decorations that the post holiday sale was over way before the holiday even happened. Okay, so I'm gonna rotate this and make sure that as far as I can see, they are all silvered. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't pick a brighter color for the torpedoes. I will be using a, a, a chrome color for the periscopes. Okay, so now we've got a dozen torpedo tails done. Next is, I want to take a look at this. That red isn't too bad. No, it's a little bit, a little bit translucent. I want to put a second coat on. It's really easy to do that, uh, just to do it. And that probably tells me that when I do the warheads of the torpedoes, that I'm going to have to two coat those as well. The first coat mostly will be just making sure that the boundary, the between the red and the silver is well done, and I wouldn't have to do too much touch-up then. Um, and then the second coat will be, in, be to finish it off. So I'm going to paint these quickly with a second coat. Then I think what I'll do, since I can take the torpedo racks off of the clips, I was going to bring a mug, but Dice and Dungeons designed themed coffee mug down with 
some water in it so I could stay hydrated, but I didn't. So now I'm feeling dehydrated. I can tell immediately that the second coat is a good idea. It's much brighter and redder than it was before. Let these dry and then Letting these dry, I'm going to paint the periscopes and snorkels. Yeah, these these do look much better this way. mess with that more. Days. These days. On the, the other thing, if you don't watch this all the time, is there's always these recurring themes of me saying things like, one of these days I need to do this. Like one of these days I need to deep clean these brushes with not just water in between colors. Or like one of these days I need to get head magnifiers and then somebody buys them for me. Um, you know, or one of these days I need to clear off this work surface so that I've got some room to do things. And sometimes one of these days actually comes around I'm going to bring out the parts tray here so you can see what we've got going here. These are the four levels of the sail. And the sail is where the periscopes and snorkels all are. So the conning tower used to be called that. These, these tubes fit into one of these like this. Okay, they cement in. And these guys, this is uh, an air intake for the snorkel. These actually s slide in and out. Mm -hmm. So these are done, barring, you know, disaster, like all the paint scraping off. This is an escape hatch that goes in the very front of the submarine. This is an access hatch that goes actually this is the, the top. The access hatch goes like that. Up to the next level, this one. That, and then that goes above that. And these tubes go all the way up through them, up through the top of the submarine. And inside here is a little ladder that I will somehow have to paint a different color, or at least make look like a different color. And as I look at this, I can see that I very carefully painted the whole thing, but I missed that side of it. So as I am doing that, I'm going to mix this up again. It's one thing I discovered is if you find a flaw like that, um, when I find a flaw like that, it's just so it's a good idea for me to fix it immediately. I'm just trying to get a little bit of paint out of the bottle. And this is kind of important because if you look at it from a certain angle after it's done, you'll actually be able to see that wall. It's Gabby looking. It's not good. So what happened here is I'm right-handed, and so I got that done, right? But I didn't turn it this way. Okay, this is just going to sit here 
and try. There's a little bit of a ladder in here too, in this escape hatch. So that'll have to be turned into a visible ladder. There's a spot there I missed. It's always good to you know, rotate all these things in all sorts of different directions. Yep, so that's these are parts of the sail. This is a set of bunks that goes into the torpedo room. This is going to be painted like one, two, three, four, four colors at least. The floor is one color. Okay. The bunk frames are a darker brown. The bed sheets are white. Outside edges are painted the green, the same green as the bulkhead. And then the inside of the ladder is painted green. And then the ladder itself will be will be painted uh, darker colors so that you can tell that it's there. The rest is turned green. So there's one, two, three, four colors plus the ladder. So I'll get to that in a little while. I'm going to be painting these, I think, next. First. I need to free up the alligator cliffs. These are the torpedo racks. The torpedoes go on these. Dozen of them. And these came out okay. I was really worried about this color, but it's 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 now okay. That's the color I just used to touch up the inside of the escape hatch. Okay, so there's the parts tray. And I need these little bitty parts here. These things that I knock over. It was like a domino thing. That was pretty impressive. Um, yeah, so these are a little bit tricky because there's, there's not too much to grip onto. So like the bottoms of these these go into those tubes, and so the very, very tiniest little bit of the bottom probably won't show. So I could grab it, these like this. The larger ones go all the way down through the sail into the tops of the periscope things in the control room. So those two I can grip at the very, very bottom. And as you may notice, just as with the torpedo racks, Okay, there are six of these things and there are five alligator clips. So what will have to happen is that I will paint five of them. And then the very first one will sacrifice its alligator clip and become the clip for the last one. Do not hold real firmly on these long ones. This, this particular clip is. Yeah. So I want to paint this one first. This is a radio antenna. These are snorkels. This is the air intake for the snorkel. Air comes up. It's a little shaded on the bottom there. And this is the exhaust. Okay. Or it's the other way around. I'm not sure. These are the snorkels anyway. This is a radio antenna. These are periscopes. So this, these are going to be painting chrome. I want them to be very shiny because um, they are like, if you've ever seen like a hydraulic uh, tractor or something or a hydraulic system where they're there's something that goes into a tube. The part that slides back and forth is always extremely bright and shiny. It's flawless. And that's what these are. They slide up and down all the time. So they need to be 
Um, okay. They need to be shiny. So I got dirt aluminum. This is the toilet color. There's chrome right in front of me. Uh, this will be very bright, unlike the torpedoes, which are not very bright. And after I paint a couple of these, you'll see the difference. I was tempted to not paint these so bright. I think maybe even like a darker color, like a steel or something. But the more I thought about them uh, and the nature of them, and if you've ever seen old submarine movies or even newer submarine movies, when it's like up periscope and down periscope, the, the part that slides in the periscope tube is always this really bright polished silver color, drum color. Okay, I'm going to try to not put out 10 times more than I need. Try to only do like twice as much as I need. And again, I want to use a, I'm going to use a fairly large bristle brush because I want them to cover pretty evenly. And so what did I say that um, the radio antenna here will be the very first to go. And hopefully this will dry by the time I get the fifth one done so that I can use the alligator clip. Sixth one. Did I just dip this in the wrong color? Yeah, I did. Yes, I did. Fortunately, I'm getting to it quickly enough. Yeah, I have the Dura Aluminium right next to the Chrome. And as I was chatting, I was paying no attention. Yep. Didn't look that shiny. This will look much shinier. using these alligator clips forever. And it always thing things things always seem to come in sixes and I've got five clips. So another one of those things in the theme of me is one of these days I should get myself some more alligator clips. It's like I probably could buy a dozen of these things. In fact, I probably have to. They probably don't come in any quantities less than that. Less than the price of shipping, no doubt. Anyway, this is probably inappropriate color because you know, on one hand, there's the hydraulics nature of these things sliding up and down, and those are always very shiny chrome-colored things, right? On the other hand, this, these are popping up over the top of this, the ocean, and the submarine is trying not to be seen. And something that's really bright and shiny would be seen, so they probably would be painted like ocean color, color of the the hull. Um, I don't know. Maybe it would make sense to do that. Maybe it would make sense to. Okay, I I can do this later. I'll have to think about it. Is that the part that would show above the sea surface, like like the top here? that that would be painted the dark gray color of the hull. Do that. I don't know. And it makes sense for the shaft here to be very shiny because it goes up and down inside of tubes. Right? But it doesn't make sense 
for the things that protrude above the top of the sea to be seen. And there's almost like a demarcation line there. That, that part might be darker, so I, it'll be easy enough to do that. As a as a afterthought, the thing that if I remember, I'm probably I'm probably going to do that. At least just the very tops of it, the, the tops that will show. Because when when the when the submarine is underway these things retract all the way down into the sail so that they um, they kind of nestle into little openings top of the sail so that they're not creating like vortices in the water right because any kind of source of noise could give the submarine away including the, the movement of these kinds of things through anyway um yeah i think i just might do that let's paint those the darker color as a thing to do later and one of these days I will get more alligator clips because they are handy to have. This is this chunk of wood here with all the holes in it that is like a million years old. That thing's probably like at least 45 years old. And it just started out as, uh, you know, when you're drilling a hole in something that's kind of thin and you want to put a backing behind it so that it doesn't just fragment all over the place. Uh, you put it on a piece of wood like that, scrap wood, and then the drill will go through and you won't end up having splintering. Well, that's what happened with this and it just so happened that as it got to the point where it was just so beat up that I couldn't even use it for that anymore, that the holes were the, exactly the right size, coincidentally, to hold the base of the alligator clips. So that's... Ever since that day has become the place where the alligator clips go. So I'm going to take now the very first one I did, the radio antenna thing. Set it in the parse tray and grab this one. Right. Thank you, Who. Sub Wednesday, Submarine Wednesday is is also now an invitation to you all to become subs yourself. Thank you for that reminder. And as we close in on the closing of the show, of the stream, I'm going to invite everybody who watches or listens, either during the Twitch stream or on YouTube later is if you're on Twitch, become a Twitch subscriber. So be a follower. And if you can, please become a subscriber because um, your support would be very much appreciated. And if you really like what you see or hear here, and on the Dungeons and Dragons stream, you can go to patreon.com slash dice and dungeons. That's A N D Dice and Dungeons. And you can become a patron. And that's even cooler 
because you get access to patron-only uh, access to our improv sessions, our warm-up sessions for a D&D &D campaign, and at certain levels you can even influence some of the things that happen. So, that's right, there you go, thanks Afala. We're going to make it that, we're going to make it so that Sub Wednesdays are subscribe. We have to be a little bit uh, mercenary, right? I mean, after all, there's a show to support. Okay, so what we have here, and I'll show you just a little bit of a contrast, is this is the uh, chrome color. And you can see that it is actually, you know, brighter in many ways than the torpedo color. So I'm going to let those just hang out there. And now, as we're getting near the end, um, there's a couple things I can do. One is I can paint the toilet rolls, toilets, the detail on the back of this. And that has to be done before I can paint the colors. And I selected the colors for the bathroom. This is the walls of the bathroom. And the dining room, which is below it. And that's what this is. Okay. And those will have to be painted on before all of this is attached. Um, because once this is inserted into the submarine, uh, I can't get to it anymore. So there's three things here, and I decided, well, I'm just going to keep putting colors on everything. Um, ventilation louvers are all going to be a very, very dark gray-blue. The doors, the hatches, sorry, are going to be a lighter gray color. Okay. Uh, toilet paper rolls are white. Toilets are going to be dark aluminum, as is the tiny little tips of the fire extinguishers. So I'm going to get out the bitty brush here. And the first thing we're going to paint is the dark aluminum toilets and fire extinguisher valves. It looks like there's a flaw in that fire extinguisher. The center one doesn't seem to be painted very well. So I'm going to put a little dab of red paint on that uh, before proceeding. Different, a different brush just Weird. Yeah, I painted two coats of this on here. And then there's spots that just didn't didn't take. Okay, well whatever it was, it's painted over now. at the time and I'm thinking that you really have to seriously deep clean this brush. Um, yeah, I'm thinking this and the two bits in the back here, the detail in the back here might be all I'm going to get done yet in this stream. And then I'll recap real quickly then what will be happening on the next. One drop is going to be plenty, I think, for what we're doing. Um, I'm going to paint the valves on the top of the fire extinguishers first. Okay. 
down onto the surface below. That's fine, because that's going to be green. get the paint on the red parts so now I'm using the small brush on this not because necessarily down onto the surface below so it's not like it's detailed but I want to make sure I get get it in all of the little nooks and crannies here The reason these are metallic is after a long discussion last week, I determined that the toilets on a submarine should be made out of like stainless steel or aluminum rather than porcelain because if they're porcelain they're subject to breakage and you can't repair it, you can't repair the porcelain. And so you'd either go without, which would be pretty unpleasant. There's not like a lot of them anyway. This can't be realistic. There is no way you get by with just three, okay, or, uh, an entire sub's worth of people. Even if it was just limited to officers, right? So that they're probably made out of stainless steel or aluminum probably, uh, because then they could be repaired in the machine shop, and if necessary, probably new ones could be fabricated from scratch. So this is going to be the case with the sinks as well. The sinks are going to be made out of this metal, and the mirrors above them will be painted chrome. So <clears throat> yeah, there's that. There's tons of paint sitting there in the uh, in the well. Next, I'm going to paint the TP rolls. So require the use of like minuscule amounts of paint. Itsy bitsy little dots of paint. And so I'm gonna definitely I'm gonna make sure they're covered. And then uh, painting the green around them. Actually it's not green. In this case it's kind of a tan, light tan color for the restroom walls you paint up to but not over a good deal around them to give myself some room to work with I paint the walls behind them and I got a good deal around them more and more as I went along. Nice. Yep, it's got sloppier and sloppier as I uh, moved from one to the next. The first one was done practically perfectly. This last one just got all over the wall. So, yeah, that's... Um, you can see how that's working and the floor goes right underneath it like that and rests on top of that little thing there and this thing here 
I'm pretty sure that's how it works. So they're going to be, these are going to be practically touching the floor underneath it. So the other thing, and this, it's way in the back, so you might not be able to see them, but when, when that is glued on, when this, the uh, torpedo racks are glued on on this side, well before I put this into the submarine, I'm going to go out of the way, and once the uh, the cowling, the uh, other thing is glued onto this, is I'm going to fill in these holes with a little bit of plastic filler and sand it down, and I'm going to do that before I paint the base coat here. And that base coat gets painted on before it gets put in. I'm going to mess around with two other colors just to do it. Um, yeah, try to get this done real quickly before the end of the stream. This color is going to be used for vents. Air vents. And hatchways. Will be neutral gray. And again, this is the kind of thing where I'm just painting them on and I'm making sure it goes all the way around the edges because that'll be painted another color up to it later. I just want to make sure it's covered. dining room hall walls are going to be light blue. Light blue seems to be the wall color of choice in like the dining rooms and the sleeping quarters. Yep. Yes, that's, you know, nice and restful, peaceful kind of, kind of color. As much as you can be restful and peaceful in a submarine. Used to that. And I was thinking of painting the hatchways metallic, um, but I think they are more likely to have been painted and painted gray than rough metallic. Same sort of thing is happening here in that um, I'll be painting the surface and down past it onto the, surf the edges below, again, just to make sure that the coverage is there. And in this case, I'll be painting into the interior of the door, of the hatch, excuse me, let me be sort of correct. Here we go, the hatch. What I'm a little bit surprised about, one thing that's good is that this was painted really with a heavy coating of green enamel. And I was able to sand that off and scrape it off without uh, ruining the detail of the door on the hatchway so that the handle still shows. In fact, I might, I should paint that a highlight color the handle to the hatch. I don't know, would you paint the ends of those red? So you could see them? Um, but I'm going to paint that a little bit different color just so you can see the... Not. I don't think we need to see the hinges and the bolts. Those would be painted over. But I'm thinking that the handle wouldn't be... I might even paint that a little bit of a metallic. Okay, I might paint it the same color as that, just the edges, yeah, just the bits of the handle there. 
And that, that little dot there, that little dot there is a window that goes through to the other side. And how can we make that look? I mean, I could paint it white. Would that make it look like a window? No. It needs to be like transparent. Hmm. That's something I need to look at is, I mean, it makes sense that there would be a window there so that you could look through the hatch and see, you know, if the, if the compartment is flooded or covered with fire or what, <laughs> the captain of the ship is coming through on the other side and you threw the door open right into, uh, into their face. That would be bad. No effort was made to show the detail of the frame of the hatch on this side. Just none at all. So, you, I mean, you got toilets detail on this side. Toilet detail, right? <laughs> but nothing here. Just steps. And they're not even very well made. I don't, I don't know. Weird. And there's a little bit of touch-up red that needs to be done. Okay, I'm right at the end, but I'm seeing a thing that needs to be touched up in a place that will be very visible. And so I'm going to do that, because otherwise I'll forget about it. And what I'm talking about, and it's probably next to invisible to you, is that a little bit of the metallic paint that I painted the valve on the fire extinguisher went down a little too far. I've got it out. I might as well check the other one. Maybe looked at this way. And be a little bit there. Okay. So I'm not fiddling with that. Um clean these after the stream is over so what we've got next is well what we did today what i did today was uh painted half of the torpedoes played around with this color of paint and finally figured out that if it was thinned down and brushed well that it covers really quite well and it's just the right color i got the snorkels and periscopes painted and I'm going to paint the very tops of them the parts that go above water here I'm gonna paint those dark gray so that they don't glint in the Sun this is going to take a little bit of work <coughs> the floor is one color it's going to be the floor color that's used on other parts of the crew area and in most of it it's going to be um, a, a lighter shade of brown just a lighter shade than this okay and then the walls and the bed frames are darker and then the outside container I guess you'll call it is green the sheets and pillows are white and then uh, the ladder will have to be either painted or a pen used to highlight that. So this will take a little bit of time. <coughs> this just gets painted green all around this. Okay, so that's easy enough other than, you know, making sure that there aren't any uh, brush marks on it. This is painted the bathroom wall color. This is painted the dining room wall color. And I've got those picked out. Okay. I'm probably going to highlight the window and the, and the handle on the hatch. The whole inside of this gets painted green. This is going to all be painted green and then I'm going to come back 
and spend a lot of time trying to show the detail of the gauges. There's a clock there. You know, it's got 12 little dots around it. Um, this is this is going to require use of my head magnifier and a very steady hand and I'll have to decide what colors to use. Not even really sure about that. Probably different shades of gray and gray blue, likely. Um, maybe some metallics like on the, the hatches, the torpedo hatches. Those are very likely to be like that dark aluminum color or maybe even steel, which is a, a darker color yet. Because I don't want they don't want it you don't want it to be real shiny. You know, they don't have to be shiny like the toilets, but um, it would be good if they were metallic. So yeah, um, I'm not sure how this will turn out, but there's a lot of detail on here that can be painted and inscribed. But the first part will be to put the base coat of green on the whole thing. Hope it lays nice and flat. I'll test it, I think. On, uh, I'll be testing it on some of these other pieces before I throw it on here. So that if it doesn't work, this is probably the place I'll test it. Because although this will show, you know, in some areas, uh, some of these areas will just barely be visible. So if, if it needs to be redone, I can, this nice flat surface, I can sand it down and, and reprime it. Yeah, so there's that. Um, this didn't cover extremely well, but it's basically just to be in the shadows. So we're going to start working on that stuff. Oh, yeah, the stairs. This is painted green as well. I'm going to get the parts tray out here. And you can see how this looks. Um... I might as well just shove all this up here. I might as well extract the torpedoes. The torpedo heads all need to be painted red, the same red as the fire extinguisher. Okay, I'm disappointed in this. Um, that coverage, it isn't, it isn't either. Okay, um, I'm gonna put these all back because I need to put a second coat of that on. I didn't expect I'd have to do that, but the coverage isn't even. I'm thinking that maybe what happened is that there's a black pigment in it that makes it darker that even though I mixed it for a good long time it uh, it wasn't enough so these torpedoes will have to get a second coat of the Dur aluminium before we proceed and to be honest it looks as though these didn't cover evenly either, so I might give those a second coat just to see if that works. So that's something to do next next submarine Wednesday, which will not be next week Wednesday. I'm going to be gone Monday and Wednesday of next week, and so uh, I either I think Nicole will probably be be taking over for a couple of days on Monday and Wednesday. And then Friday I'll be doing uh, dungeon tiles, sewer tiles, as I will on Monday. So unless I start doing submarine Friday and Wednesday, um, we'll be getting back to this two weeks from today. As I do second coats of torpedoes and um, periscopes. So, thanks for joining in. If you become a subscriber... Uh, that would be terrific if you were to go to patreon.com slash Dyson Dungeons. That would be awesome, as it is said. Any support you can give is welcome. 
If you like what you're seeing and hearing, please tell your friends and relatives and even enemies that they should join Relaxing Painting with Dyson Dungeons on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 10 until 2, and Dungeons and Dragons campaign on Sundays at 2. You can also catch them on YouTube. And, um, I, yes, um, as a podcast for our uh, campaign. Thanks again, and we'll see you Friday morning. <laughs>